Hey YouTube, this is React City. I'm Marcus. I'm Rose. I'm Nikki. And this is the React Cast Podcast, episode Ooh. 17. Woo! Season 2. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, the fun fact for this week is going to also kind of be a topic. You know how you're trying to remember old TV shows, especially stuff like old Dragon Ball shows, and mm -hmm. then you watch them now and they don't really look the way that you're yeah. really looking? Mm. Well, I saw a YouTube short by uh, Totally Not Mark, and he was explaining how anime reels are really hard to keep. They have like massive films. Oh. They have to properly store or they degrade, mm -hmm. and that's the original source, but then there's a couple examples. But it's like the broadcast reel, that's how it looked there, but then in the box version, this is how it looked. So it's actually, you weren't crazy. Things legitimately were different colors oh. based on when you saw it as a kid versus what you actually see okay, now. Okay, okay, Interesting. Interesting. In this case, they took out some blood and like Dragon Ball Z Kai. <laughs> but that got me thinking, it's like, wait, you're telling me everyone still has the original reels? And the answer is yes, look at Oppenheimer's film reel. Oh. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That massive thing. Mm -hmm. wow. And they have to keep that very in a very special way or you're losing forever. Yes. I saw plenty of people commenting that they don't really keep good care of a lot of the original anime stuff. And the reason for that is because it's just so much over time. Like, it'll be like a fifth of the size of the Oppenheimer one, right? Mm -hmm. But that's just for one season. So then imagine okay. for every single episode there's another film reel. You can't keep that for like animes that go hundreds of episodes. No. So over time, you either you invent an industry which is dependent upon making these safe, or you throw them out, yeah. which is yeah. typically what happens. Right? Yeah. Wow. I Christopher Nolan. Is it Christopher Nolan? Yeah, it's Christopher Nolan. Um, he there's like a meme about everything. He says you have to watch it in IMAX. He, oh the, yeah. Yeah. And like uh, apparently there's only like. There's also a specific theater he recommends, which is absolutely massive, and there's only like four in California, I think, that operate like that. But the one he specifically shows you to is like the, the biggest one. Mm -hmm. It's huge. So what, like, what is special about IMAX? I don't know. <laughs> I've never watched anything in IMAX. Like the screens are just bigger. I think the, the screen is bigger. It's huge. Okay. Um, I don't. I think. Some, somebody, the people who do like go to a theater and watch it in IMAX say that the experience is diff different and it's awesome. But again, I, like, I've never seen anything in IMAX. I don't know what to say about it. Yeah, that's where you get into like film connoisseur territory. Yeah. Where, you know, with anything, like with food, with video games, any kind of entertainment, it's like mm -hmm. there's entry level where, yeah, I like that. But if you're really into the actual art form, there's another step up. And I feel like that's kind of what IMAX and specific reels are yeah. like um there's some directors who only shoot on certain um, ratios because mm -hmm. they feel like that's what they're good with mm -hmm. and then it gets corrected to other stuff but they make it their way on this rinky dinky old stuff <laughs> but, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well like film does have like its pros oh, yeah. um because like a pair, like on film when you make a, a a video or whatever on film it's like basically it a vector mm. so like it's infinitely scalable, scalable. it's not pixels mm -hmm. like a digital if you mm -hmm. did something in digital and it well that's why uh, all the star wars films that like they show now on tv they still look great yeah they don't look old and fuzzy and stuff yeah. because they were filmed on film wow. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i guess there's the benefits and the drawbacks of digital yeah. and film mm -hmm. interesting I thought, that, that explains why they they still keep it around because like there's some things like I always wonder like why do we still do that like why is yeah. that still a thing it's because there are so many benefits that we lost in the new the new mm -hmm. the new technology yeah mm -hmm. I, I wonder how much new technology is held back by an effort to keep the old stuff mm -hmm. which it is good but I'm wondering like could we do more with the new stuff or is it just cheaper mm -hmm. my question do you know I do not know. Um, I do know that one of the benefits of digital is that you can retain more information in darker settings. So that, um, somebody, I think it was um, a video on Vox that I watched, um, and they were saying the reason why a lot of people, like it seems like films have suddenly gotten darker, mm -hmm. is because we've quite literally never been able to film in darker settings and retain the information within yes. the camera before. Uh, so people are taking advantage of that. Yes, everyone wants to do it. Kids in the candy store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, for all that stuff of better theaters, bigger screens, while I do think I would enjoy the experience, my favorite part of the movie theater is going to a very small, isolated spot and just sitting in a dark room and watching the screen. There's yeah. something 
very nice but an isolating Sweet. environment yes. you are in you're watching this movie yes. that you just don't get from watching it on a TV screen it's true. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I think I'll go get a snack or, yeah um, let me just pause here I'm gonna yeah. run to the bathroom really quick yeah, you, well, you, don't ruin, have to. you ruin your experience yeah. mm, this is true where do you end up in the theater, you're like, you're holding your peeps. Like, let me just get to the, let me just intermission, <laughs> please. That, oh well, yeah, you know, I actually miss intermission. Me too, yeah, me too. I love oh. intermission. Oh man. I feel like that was kind of before our time, <laughs> but still the idea of it's like, that is really helpful. No, yeah. I, I, I experienced intermissions. You yeah, you guys, you did at least. Yeah. I don't remember. I, don't I think know. I remember you. one intermission when I was younger. And yeah. There was another movie we watched more recently that had an inter intermission. I don't remember what really? it was. I don't remember a recent intermission. Do you remember what movie it was? I remember plays. <laughs> <With intermission. laughs> yeah, plays. But not in that, in that movies. But yeah, I, yeah let, let me think. I think like, as a kid, every movie I ever went to had an intermission. Though I remember when there wasn't an intermission, I was like, waiting like i think we're supposed to have a break soon <laughs> yeah. if the movie's over what yeah. like and the, and the fun thing about intermission it was also like seriously anxiety inducing was like dad would be like you want to go get a snack <laughs> so we'll okay get time let's go we we have 10 minutes <laughs> and then and everybody, everybody the else is at everybody the line, the line. Was like, I'm gonna hurry up and have this the next part yeah but it, it was like a fun experience to have intermission yeah I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and it come in handy because mm -hmm. I remember the one time we were watching Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one in the theaters, mm -hmm. and I had to pee. Yeah, I missed the entire you thing. Missed the big yes. part. Yes. Because I held it for the entire movie because I don't know. I, I usually don't have to go use the bathroom, but That's that day true. I think maybe I got more drink in the cup than <laughs> usually or something because I was like, oh my gosh, I, I really have to go, and I held it and I held it and I held it so I was like. It's, it's either I go now or I'm going to pee myself. <laughs> so I went, I waddled out of there, and I made it back, and I saw the, 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 yeah, the dance scene was over, and everything was over, I think. I think at that point they were just sitting around like, wow, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> like I left right before the dancing started. Yeah. Oh. And I came back where everything was done, and they were yes. kind of wrapping up. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember you missed, like, the main part. I just remember that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it looks like, like the weird, like, random things that, like, like this generation is never gonna experience that like even I was thinking about it like waiting to 8 o'clock to for your favorite show to come on right. to finally air the new episode oh every yeah week. it's like just waiting for that it's, like, oh, it's almost 8 o'clock yes it's, it's 7.59 yes one, one more minute you did you go shower today mom pops in did you go shower today mom <laughs> episode of iCarly and it was like 7.50 and mom was like you better go shower because you have not showered today and I was like but mom the new episode is about to go she's like you're gonna go shower and I'm like fine and I took like literally the fastest shower I've ever had in my life at the, at the time yes. I was taking like three hour showers yeah, because was moderation showers. was not a thing for me with showers at the I love water <laughs> I, still, I can shower in under 30 minutes now okay. it's fine <laughs> She said. <laughs> but yeah, I, I showered in like five minutes and then got dressed and came back like one minute into the show. I was like, this is okay. Oh, I thought it was going to upset anyone. No, <laughs> I, I got to watch No, that. when I heard 10 minutes, I was like, she could she could do that if she had to. Oh, Not right. back then. Back then, it was like 30 minutes was an accomplishment, you know? Yeah, I know. But yeah, but I feel like as, as a human being, as a human being, yes. I believe in your humanness. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love the old schedules. I remember how like uh, we had a system at one point where mm -hmm. Disney would have its regular shows and mm -hmm. new episodes. I, I don't remember why they did this. But I think it was like a new episode sometimes would come on like three o'clock mm -hmm. or five o'clock. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're expecting the kids come home mm -hmm. and at like five o'clock they've mm -hmm. done their homework or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you missed it there, then three hours later on Disney XD, yeah. they'd have the same episode that was new on that. Yeah. Oh. Didn't tell anybody this. That was the most freedom we ever experienced. Yeah. <laughs> remember is um airing 7 30 8 30 central yes. <laughs> I it was all i think most of the shows were 7 30 8 30 central yeah or 7 8 central mm -hmm. and you had to cray if you missed it that they decided to do it again the next day yes. sometimes they wouldn't yeah that's but true. usually it was like they'd have a new episode yeah. tomorrow same time new yeah. episode mm -hmm. and then we're just moving on we're yeah, yeah, yeah. for some reason uh 40 episodes ago we're going to show this episode again why yeah. <laughs> feel like it yeah yeah, yeah. Like it. yeah. i actually remember like one show i can't remember the show though but there's a show i actually quit mm. because i missed the next episode oh. <laughs> i was like i don't want to watch anymore because i missed it <laughs> yeah. but i remember 
remember what it was. It was remember, cartoon? Yeah, it was cartoon. Mm. It, 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 I think it was when, I think it was, may have been Cartoon Network, because it was in the, it was like in, in the evening, like before bed or something. Mm. But it may have, maybe it was in like a school week or something, and I had to go to school, go to school the next day, and mom and dad used to make us go to bed really early. Yeah. But I don't know, but I remember I quit that show. <laughs> I just like, I missed it. I remember a show that was a really good show, but I never figured out why, but it only aired 6 a.m. <laughs> it was, a, it was, remember it was like Sky Nights or something? Oh! With had like a, everyone had their own, it was a really cool looking, like a bird shaped plane. And it was a time period where there were just knights in the sky who dog fights and stuff like that, but you had to have a squadron. Mm -hmm. And you had to prove yourself and they didn't knight you and you'd officially be in the military. That and sounds his really group familiar. was rejected and they just went off and became their own heroes. And that was their whole thing. And really? I loved that show. Every new episode, 6 a.m. No <laughs> reruns, ever. And I never understood why. But so I'd wake up, you know, we'd get ready for school. I'd get awake at like 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. Or so at 5 a.m. But I remember started getting up a bit earlier so that I could finish everything in time to watch that episode. Yeah. Hmm. And then just stopped coming on one day and that was it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Evidently, I, I knew it got cancelled. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, who's awake to watch that 6 a.m.? 6 a.m., yeah, yeah. Usually. In my exact situation. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically when they put the shows that early, it's basically they're phasing them out. Yeah. And the thing is, I thought it was a new show because new episodes were coming out. Oh. So I didn't get it. It's like, they're trying to kill the show? <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of Pappy Land. Pappy Land was relegated to 6 a.m. Oh, no. Pappy Land was. Is that. Is that was. No, no, the, I don't know. It's the Bob actually. Ross of the children of the sphere. Of the 90s, of the like 90s. before, maybe the 80s, because it, it ended when I was like six or seven. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was, I would get up at 6 a.m., like even in the summer, like mm -hmm. just to watch that. It's a drawing show. It's, they would teach kids how to draw. Okay. That's how I learned the two turned into a, a face. Uh -huh. And then I made up the word, uh, oh, not two. Yeah, the two. And also the word boy turned into a face. He taught those little things. Yeah. And then he would show, like, um, kids who sent in their artwork. He would show it on the show. Yeah, that guy. Happy he would, with a Y. Um, and oh. he, I would send, I sent him my artwork once because I, I was always like, I want to send my work, I want to send my work. And then I was procrastinating as, even as a child. I was like, oh next time until I literally like I saw the last episode and it's like maybe I'll send in my art but it was like the last episode <laughs> I never played it anymore yeah. but yeah they actually have a video on YouTube like or there was a video years ago of <laughs> him as like grown up with his grandson or something like oh. asking about hey dad or grandpa or whatever can you remember blah 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 and we're talking about Pappy Man that is cute yeah. you know I've heard you speak about Pappy Pappy Druid a lot <laughs> and I've always thought you were talking Pappy. about Ross <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know this guy existed yeah. I always thought like he's the original Bob Ross yeah, I never put it together because you were singing that song and I was like that's not Bob Ross song <laughs> <laughs> why would he call himself Pappy Land <laughs> yeah was, in my head there's only one artist oh yeah, yeah. You know, what's the last TV show, like cartoon or otherwise, mm -hmm. that you were keeping up with before you kind of stopped watching TV? Because, I mean, at this point, you know, occasionally I'll go Google a TV show, mm -hmm. but that's different. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the last one that you were like, today it comes on at this time, I go oh, watch it? Psych. Psych? Psych 100%. Really? Yeah. Actually, I never, I, I... That's a good show. I watched Psych, but I actually kept watching it on, on the computer. Yeah. Online. Like, I never... Uh, like I, I gave up on watching it on TV because of the whole like only at this time yeah. and it was I, they eventually stopped playing and I just wanted to keep watching it so I actually started like going back to the beginning of watching the whole series mm -hmm. through I forgot I think I went to the the t whatever channel they played it on they had it for free on their on their website mm -hmm. um, so I can't count sec but I, I, I'm trying to remember the only one I can think of is actually Phineas and Ferb I was gonna say that yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. I, that's the most recent one I can think that I was down for TV just to watch Venus and Ferb. Yeah. 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 I think that kept us on TV for like a couple more years. Yeah. yeah. Because because I think there was nothing else we were watching. Yeah, I think before that, we, like, there was the pe a long period of no TV. Like, we didn't really watch anything on TV. Oh my and gosh. then it, anything before that, I think of Teen Titans. Yeah. That's the last thing I remember before. I I just remembered th something. I think I, for me, it might have been Cake Boss. <laughs> Cake Boss. Cake, Cake Boss. Boss. Yeah. I think it might have been Cake Boss. I was just watching people bake cakes uh, all the time. Yeah. And, like I could, like where else was? I, for some reason, I was thinking like TLC doesn't show anywhere else. <laughs> like, why am I? I'm not gonna go online and try and find it. I'm just yeah. gonna watch it here on, on 
whatever. Yeah. And it's not like it has a continuous plot either. Yeah. So I, like I can pick up whichever show and be like, okay. Convenient. Mm. Yeah. Or even like just making the episodes where I think of Castle, mm -hmm. where even though there is a string of plot going through the show, mm -hmm. you can kind of like jump in at any episode and just enjoy that episode. Yeah. You know. So I feel like even these days when they play Castle on TV, mm -hmm. they're just all over the place with the yeah. seasons. One episode, she her hair is cut short. It's like season one. The next episode, they're in love. Her hair is super long, they're and they're they're about they're married. They're yeah. crying about getting married or something. You know, it's like they don't care anymore. It's like, oh, this was a favorite episode. This was a favorite episode. Yeah, eighty percent filler. Eighty <laughs> percent filler. It really is. I, I like. I think you could actually like jump in anywhere and just know exactly what's happening with everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what's interesting is that they, it's not like they explain it verbally in the show. You just know no, what's happening. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> but uh. Another topic over here. I just saw um, Villain Saga's creator apparently. They were asking about uh, some questions. I couldn't find the source interview. Mm -hmm. But he was basically saying, okay, so there's a lot of fans right now who are wanting more action and violence because last season was kind of lacking in that department, mm -hmm. except for you know, right at the end. <laughs> but he was saying, okay, so if you guys want action and violence, go watch Attack of Titan. <laughs> that's what he said. I love it! Yes! <laughs> like, literally, the whole of last season was we're letting go of violence. Be like, where's the violence? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seriously. You know, and I wonder how much he can get away with doing that because even though he is making a show that isn't about glorifying violence and is about uh, finding a way to make peace, he kind of created this the people he drew in. Like. Uh, well, not just that, it's like. Can you survive without it? Mm. Because I feel like you almost have to force conflict in the show in order to not just grab the attention of viewers, but also so that sort of can prove his point. Mm -hmm. True. You know, so there is going to be violence. Yeah. It's just sure it's not the focus of the show, but there is there has to be actually violence. Yeah. Mm. I guess that's true. Yeah. I mean, people um, call the farm art boring, but I didn't find it boring at all. Me neither. Without the violence. Uh, to me, it's because of. In any story, you need some sort of conflict, mm -hmm. but that conflict doesn't necessarily have to be violent conflict. No. Like we in this in this season, we saw Thorfinn dealing with a lot of internal conflict. How do you have this philosophy and once um, it's up against this real life situation, how do you stick to your guns, mm -hmm. or do you have to change your mind about it a little bit? Are there concessions to be made in some way? Um, so in that way. To, to me, I was fine because there was a conflict to be resolved, mm -hmm. but it's also like part of the whole journey of Thorfinn is he, he was like the warrior of warriors. People m need to be scared of him. Yeah. Um, but he's letting that go and he's trying to have a life outside of that. Yeah. Agreed. And I also kind of thought of the show, you didn't exactly, like the, the, the whole season, you didn't exactly feel at ease. Mm -hmm. Like relax and let's no. chill. It was they're slaves <laughs> and they're trying to get away from being slaves. And Leaf is trying to find him and he's so close and you're like ah. And and also Kettle is on edge and weird and um these there's these evil retainers trying to hurt them and they are beating up the retainers. They might just actually get beat up. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many things that are just you're not on a stable ground. So mm -hmm. it didn't feel like we were just chilling here. No. It felt like no, we're dealing with something here, and we're 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 on our toes, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then it just got progressively worse as the season went on, mm -hmm. and then you got some of the violence. Mm -hmm. But I, I think there's so much going on. It's hard for you to say, oh, we're we're just in what what is what is the like a filler a filler mm -hmm. arc? He doesn't feel like a filler arc. It feels like a necessary arc. Yeah, it's it's like the whole with the whole all of season one and two. You cannot appreciate what Thorfinn is going in season one unless you've really so seen what he's gone through in sorry, sorry you can't appreciate around. what he's going through in season two unless, unless you, you saw, saw what he went through in season one like yes. you're, you're fully in his psychology yes through the all of season one and then you're if you just start at season two you're kind of like assuming like oh it's just an old warrior with like PTSD or whatever yes. but it since you actually see him what he's gone through and what he's trying to deal with and mm -hmm. settle in his past and settle internally, 
you're like, okay, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm figuring, I want to figure this out with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And see what conclusion you come to and stuff yes. like that. Yes, that's true. And that's probably maybe the, the route that the author really wanted. Like, maybe the whole reason he did that violent, crazy first season mm -hmm. was just to establish the mentality of Thorfinn. Mm -hmm. This six-year-old to 16-year-old to whatever age he is now. Like, you needed to see that growth and that pain and that trauma for the art to make sense and, and then for him to be able to tell the story he wants to tell. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's the whole reason is like, go find a fucking titan if you want more violence. Yeah. yeah, I think that harkens back to one of his earlier interviews where he wanted to make a story about confronting violence with no violence. Mm. And so he picked out this time period because it's probably one of the most violent time mm. periods in human mm. humanity's history. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Do you think it's going to end up being like a commentary on present day? Mm, I don't think so. I think uh, the lessons that you learn from that time period can be applied to any time period. Mm -hmm. And that is as far as it's going to go as a commentary. Mm -hmm. I think it's more a commentary on human nature, not necessarily mm -hmm. time periods. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, there is that meme that, I mean, I don't know if you saw it or not, that went around, I have no enemies. The whole point is, like, you yourself have to be at peace and just let it yes. go. Yes. You don't actually have to, any beef with this person. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I mean, it is affecting people. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's nice to see. But um, what you said about growing up with him, not growing up with him, seeing him grow up. Yeah. And watching this character from the depths of hell come to this point, mm -hmm. um, I think has a lot more impact on the viewer experience than people think. Mm -hmm. And that led into that comment I was telling you the other day about how people were saying what characters, if they weren't uh, very attractive, mm -hmm. would they get away with this? And someone said, Aaron Yeager. Yeah. Uh, in no way broke and put the Hitler switch and everyone's okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah and I think, mm -hmm. but also, we saw him grow up, we saw yeah. him went through all mm -hmm. the pain. And the thing is, it doesn't justify what he does, no. but being there with the person through the terrible moments allows you to feel this is almost justified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you, I, you understand them more. Yeah. I think it's probably the extreme case of, like, uh, not normalizing, um, humanizing, humanizing the villain. Mm -hmm. Where you, do you just want to show their perspective, their side, their, oh, they grew up like this, they had bad parents, they, when somebody smacked them in kindergarten, or, you know, something like that, that gave them a reason for being the way they are. But then to, we just kind of got to the extreme with people like Aaron, where we saw the entire childhood, and he was on. We, he was actually a good guy, yeah. and he, we felt with for him the, for many seasons. We never saw what he became coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when it happened, you're like, I'm conflicted. Yeah. It's, it's literally like seeing your 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 little brother become a villain. You're like, you can't kill him. Yeah, I, I might just join him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a part of part of it is that like he you want to say he doesn't have a point, but at the same time you don't have an alternative. Yeah, you don't you don't have any better alternative to offer to other than uh, let's just all die. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yes, that makes me think of um, what's his name? Oh, what's his name from Triton? Batch. Oh, Batch. Batch. Batch and his brother. Like Batch is just like brother, stop! Why? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, pretty much his life. Oh, I'm here, and that's what you can say. I just remember that. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, he he's a he just had he has no answer for his brother, but he just wants his brother to be a good guy, you yeah. know, just the same way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, after I saw that comment, I was trying to think of other examples, and a lot of them I could excuse, like I'm thinking, ah, uh, hmm. Lelouch? He does a lot of messed up stuff, but now nah, he's very justified and kind of right, the other side is evil. <laughs> there is no side that's objectively all clean in that entire anime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he somehow came up with, like, the best... Or, well, the most thorough, I should say. The most thorough way to, like, get the best ending for the people he cares about. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Oh, um, Light. Light from Death Note. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes, the anime treats him as a villain. But the fan base loves, loves him. Light, yeah. A lot of people excuse what he does. Yeah, yeah. I've seen some demented comments about how right Light is. <laughs> and it's just like, you only like him because he's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the potato chip at Eda scene. Yes. And never went back. <laughs> no. Exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, that makes we, sense. Yeah, for that one we were, uh, we were talking about earlier with the uh, guy from Demon Slayer, the um, Thunder, Thunder Boy. Um, Thunder. Oh, Zenitsu? No, 
on the big thing on his head. Oh, the right, evil, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ugly monster one. Yes, <laughs> the one with many emotions, yeah. many, many emotions. sides, no, many personalities. Yeah. The personality disorder. Mm -hmm. We were talking about how that guy is universally disliked by people in anime. Uh, comment sections, people who talk about the manga, like, this guy sucks. But people give passes on demons like Yetero, which he had does have a very, um, the one that, uh, sound killed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yotaro? Yotaro? Yotaro. Um, yeah, the one that... With a sister. Uzui killed. Yeah. 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 People give him a pass because of how terrible his backstory was, which was terrible, like his sister getting killed and burned and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But how do you give him a pass and not the guy who actually legitimately does not have faculty over his, all his he's, actions? Yeah. Yes, he's he acts as a good personality. Yeah. Which, to be fair, the anime doesn't really get it into that much. It didn't make it as clear. A yeah. lot of manga readers were talking about how you know, he actually has several mental illnesses where he doesn't understand what he's doing, or rather, doesn't have control other, over these other personalities. Mm -hmm. But he dismissed it as pure evil. Yeah. yeah. But he actually has a problem. Yeah. Where all these other people, they had a choice. Yeah. Yes. A bad choice. Yeah. But they had a choice. Yes. Yeah, that's true. I guess, it, and, and also I was mentioning before, is like I wonder if it's a, a commentary on how people look at mental illness. Mm. You know, people, people are saying, oh yeah, mental illness is in the conversation. Let's talk about mental illness. But the mental illness people talk about is anxiety and depression, which are debilitating for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But it's not the same as like I think you you kind of split the the, the nomenclature to mental disorders, mm -hmm. which are people who literally don't have control over themselves or they are the split personalities or mm -hmm. whatever it is like they people don't talk about that yeah. and like do are, are that's still kind of like a, a almost taboo yeah it's like people don't want to talk about that people don't want to face people like that mm -hmm. and i think about this guy who probably had like split personality disorder mm -hmm. and oh no we don't need any we don't need to give him any any um sympathy tenders like take responsibility like uh, can he <laughs> like that's not even that's not even brought up at all and i just feel like i wonder if it's kind of like where society is where we're yeah we're talking about mental illness but are we yeah. are we talking about mental illness <laughs> it's strange how even in the anime sure tantor does call out demons time to time like he yelled at um uh, Ak Akaza to come back, stop running away, yeah. Yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. He does call them out times time, but I feel like he went especially hard against the split guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. like more than the other demons. Yeah, and I just find it funny that, like I've said before, he's the one with actual issues, not actual issues. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I wonder if it's actually from a mangaka perspective, mm. if that's kind of feeding into it. Mm. I wonder. Yeah, and, and the one thing I'm just remembering is like the one thing that was like the redeeming moment was. He was, oh, did I actually do that? And then he fades away and dies. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, to me, that moment is, oh, he's admitting he's at fault. It's his fault. Mm -hmm. But then we still are left with the question, is it his, is fault? It his fault? Yeah. You know, like it, it's kind of like, what what kind of commentary is this? That is it? Is it someone's fault when they have a mental illness? Like, is it in this? Is it their fault? Like, I mean, even the court of law doesn't say it's their fault. Like, people who claim insanity mm -hmm. you know even if they don't have that the lawyers are like claim insanity and then mm -hmm. they get out of trouble yeah. but it's because they don't have their faculties mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem to be that in this in this case here so mm -hmm. you just wonder yeah one thing i think that definitely does point to him having some level of control is the very end mm -hmm. when he stabbed the monk guy who's going to tattle on him for mm -hmm. stealing from the lord i think that was actually just him like, oh, okay. I think he was in control of his actions when he did that. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe the lesson was he does have all these mental issues and he's created these things in his Barriers. mind to protect himself. Mm -hmm. But at his very core, he is a slimy rat. <laughs> and he did kill that one guy and then he started blaming things that he did do on the bad parts of himself. Oh, so maybe... Oh, oh okay. Interesting. Oh, like, he so. does have problems on a lot of things he didn't do, but he, at his core, he did do some of it. Mm -hmm. And he pushed it off on others. Maybe. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's what the res take responsibility part is. Mm -hmm. Is like, yes, you have a lot of issues, and yes, not, not everything is your fault, but the things that are your fault, mm -hmm. at least take responsibility for that. So Tanjiro is just like, knows everything about these demons. Like, no. he can touch them. <laughs> I can tell the truth about you. He can smell the truth. He can smell the truth. Get it right. <laughs> this is it was crazy as I think that actually happened. It's <laughs> probably. <laughs> he smelled when Snow was angry. Yeah. <laughs> I smell your BS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and you know that's just one of those conversations that we we're just having off the cuff. Um, yeah. And it really started to remind me of how I used to watch our uh, blind boy pretty much every every day mm -hmm. uh, before I got busy. And watching them, they would always have these little moments, even reactions in talking about other things, discussions, or even in mailbox openings. So like, oh yeah, I saw the craziest thing the other day, and Eric would be like, it's here for the podcast. And that became like a thing yeah. for, anime, for the, not an anime, for their channel. Yeah. Same for the podcast. And I'm starting to see why. It's like, once you actually sit down to talk about these things. A lot comes up. Yeah, yeah. And a lot comes up. And there's sometimes a dead moment that could have been filled with this awesome story that I told off camera. Yeah, yeah. that's you true. Know? That's true. And so there's, uh, last week I wanted to tell you guys about the anime real sizes and tell you about totally, not, not Mark's video. I probably still want to show you the actual video because he had better evidence uh, side by side than I could find. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really interesting. I, it really really sent me down a rabbit hole of reading about uh, film and stuff like that. Mm. But all of that I could have had on the podcast, so I kept it out of talking with you guys. Like, yeah. I just bring up random facts with you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Speaking of stuff that's come up, um, now that we have this week, Thursday, just mm -hmm. guys, and we'll be back. Yeah. We're going to expect a new intro, a new outro, the yes. whole shebang. Yes. I'm very excited for it. I mean, I was, I like season one, but season two is way better. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Wait, Dr. Jessica? Just guys. Um, mm. I liked season one a lot. And I think the second half, like towards the end, it got better and better and better. But I didn't feel as excited as I do now, especially after season two's ending, especially with stuff mm. with Toji. Hmm. Hmm. Toji is a guy who had the heavenly pact with no. Oh, 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 Toji. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I was. Hmm. The second half. The thing is, I barely remember the first half of season one it's like season two season second half of the first season is where like all of the first season is in my head <laughs> um so i don't know maybe i would agree with you just because of that fact but i don't know i i can't rank them in my head honestly i i, I like them really equally cool fights. i do i i and i'm really happy with what we have gotten so far with jujutsu kaisen mm -hmm. which it just makes me happy because I hate for a show that I like to do badly because yeah. I want it to keep going. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy with um, season two, but I don't know that I loved it more because I guess because season one was an establishing, is the establishing shot for yeah. me mm -hmm. of the characters and who they are and, and the their motives. You know, meeting Goja for the first time, seeing his lovely eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, you know, just kind of falling in love with the characters in the beginning. It's mm -hmm. kind of now taken the nostalgia place in my heart so i can't like i could never let go of it with to say oh no i like this season better mm -hmm. you know i think it's, it's gonna take some time for me for it to kind of simmer mm -hmm. and then after after maybe a year a couple years then i'll see what rises to the surface of the most memorable moments yeah. and then i'll say okay season one season two yeah i think gonna, oh no wait season one had brother no so season one wins <laughs> <laughs> season one wins for me Ta -da. my brother the characters are awesome. It was, oh yeah, all of the characters character? are pretty. I actually think Panda is actually my favorite character. Panda. Panda. Wow. Yeah. Pretty awesome. He's just, he's just like why? <laughs> like, there's this a whole panda, and also he's a gorilla sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But also he's a panda. <laughs> And like he takes nothing seriously. Yeah. He's like actually like a teenager. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess that's that's the only reason why he's my favorite. Because he's a panda. I don't know who's my favorite. I'm like thinking through the characters and I'm like, I like that one, but I like that one too. Mm -hmm. And I like this one too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I like that one more. I, I like I can tell you like my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I like Inumaki because mm. he speaks with food. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and he, also, when he's he's super powerful. Yeah. Like, it's a, I love that idea where he like he controls himself by just saying very you know, what is it like Sashiki. harmless harmless things, yes. harmless words. And then you kind of have to decipher what is he saying. What does it mean? Um, so technically, every word counts. Yeah. Because like that one time when he was like run, they were like oh dang something's happening. Yeah. <laughs> And then um, I enjoyed, uh, oh, what was it? Oh, I, I like Gojo obviously because especially this season they established him as um, so much more, so much deeper than even season one. He was pretty deep, and all the little things that he would do. I just, I was just the other day I was remembering the last, I think it was the special episode we had where they were playing baseball. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And at the very end, he walks and takes us. He was walking by the master and some, the old guy, mm -hmm. and he steps on an ant. And if you see him step, and you think, oh my gosh, he killed the ant, and then he's, his foot moves, and the, the ant's alive. And yeah. He didn't touch it. Yeah. And then you think about that plus this season. It's like, oh my gosh, what has made him become that? Yeah. Where he does not. In the first season, he left footsteps, apparently. Yeah. This season, no footsteps. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just makes it makes him so much deeper. But I mean, he's everybody's favorite character, so yeah. I, I hate I hate picking everybody's favorite. Same. Character. Yeah, I actually, <laughs> this might be recency bias. I really like Toto, but I like Toji a lot. Toji, Toji, Toji. Oh yes, I keep forgetting. Look at me. Just says. Just call him Pushigaru number one. <laughs> yes, Pushigaru number one. Uh, yeah, but uh, the thing is about him is he came in, saw the established system. Destroyed it, went about his day. <laughs> Basically. That. That's cool. Because he is literally just a force of nature, as far as everyone's concerned. And yeah. also, I kind of like seeing cocky characters get knocked down a peg. <laughs> and so when Gojo and Ghetto were just constantly full of himself, beating up everybody mm -hmm. without caring the world, and this mm -hmm. guy just came through and was like, no, I thought about this and just beat the hell out of him. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though I did really feel bad for um, the Riga girl. I still was like, this guy is just so awesome. He really is. Yeah, I just do a job that's impossible. He, and he did, did it, it anyway. <laughs> just cut us. Yeah. Because he said it was impossible. And that's why he did it. And then he walked away fine mm. until he wasn't, but you know. Yeah, and I even like the way it ended. Because, I mean, obviously, this should be spoiled. We're talking about season two, about to come back, right, guys? Yeah. So, uh, um, when he got killed in the very end, he yeah. acknowledged, I got killed because. I got cocky. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, he could see it. It's mm -hmm. like, I can't believe it. I did that. Mm -hmm. Like, my whole life, I would never do that. And right now, I chose to do it. I guess the strongest guy on the planet. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoy that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it when characters are introspective and they can acknowledge the mistakes that they made. Yeah. But they can also exploit the mistakes other people make. And they don't rub it in anyone's faces. Yeah. He beat up Ghetto, he beat up Gojo. He didn't really rub it in anybody. Yeah. Aside from kicking Ghetto in the face. Yeah, but he did do that. I, I think that was kind of necessary because he didn't know if Ghetto, would, if he killed him, like all the girls would come out or anything. Mm -hmm. So he needed to make sure he was unconscious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just remember somebody else that I like. Uh, Sakuna. 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 Oh, yeah. Sakuna. The, I kind of like I existed. Really? Yeah, because he's, <laughs> he's just hiding in. Itadori. But I really like like his pers the way they portray him. Mm -hmm. I think Itadori's head is perfect for him. Like, mm -hmm. just the markings on his head. I think Itadori was designed for Sakuna. <laughs> That's what I think. Like, he's perfect for him. And his voice, I want to know who voiced him. I feel like it, it's, it's got to be a famous voice. Yeah, he is. He, but, I've, I've heard him in a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, yeah but he, he has an amazing voice, his personality, the way he deals with Itadori. Like, even when he's unsure, because I remember when he was making the deal with him when Itadori was dead, mm -hmm. and, he, and, he was, and, he, and he came back and I was like, he doesn't remember. I was like, oh, it worked! <laughs> <laughs> so, I love, I, I love that villain. And he also is very simmery, you know, he's just there, and then sometimes mm -hmm. just comes out, so it, I mean, it's very unpredictable. I mean, in their head, he's literally just chilling on, like, a throne of bones, yeah. just, like, seeing what's going on. Yeah. Hey, this is pretty cool. Yeah. I'll just jump in whenever I feel like it. I yes, guess. and I keep waiting for that moment too. Like, when is he gonna come out? Yeah. Apparently, the guy who voiced him also voiced Greed in Full Metal Alchemist. Ah. He also uh, voiced in Jintama. Hmm. Who is that? Going on? Yeah. Go on. I thought I'd know the character, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Grimjaw. You don't know that guy, but Grimjaw is a very popular character in Bleach. Question: um, Is there any? Like animes you guys have heard of that you guys are like, I want to watch that, but you just haven't gotten around to watching it. Oh yeah, that to 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 at my dental office, like literally has a tattoo of Totoro on her arm. Yeah. She's really into anime, but of Totoro, <laughs> I, I was like, I, I'm gonna have to watch this show now. <laughs> yeah, so what is that? Um, so 20, 30, 31 years ago, the yeah. show was made. Yeah, I, I've never seen any any Studio Ghibli anything, <laughs> which is like sacrilege to all anime fans yeah, out there. The one I want to see is Spiritual Away. Oh, I'm not watching that. Mm. I, I know it's sad. The Ghibli movies, they all have a air of yes. sadness. sadness yes. Even if when they're not sad yes. movies, they've got like a feeling of yes. melancholy. melancholy, melancholy loss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's that's. I think. Remember when I was telling you I didn't like Ponyo? Yeah. And it was a Studio Ghibli show. 
is that was one of the reasons mm -hmm. I just it wasn't sad I don't think mm -hmm. I don't remember it ending sad I mm -hmm. think it had sad moments but I just felt sad yeah. watching the show it's like I'm losing time. something here something I don't is know leaving what me. it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it, it's, it's pretty yeah but I was like so after watching that I was like I don't want to watch anything else to yeah. give me if this is what you're gonna give me but yeah, um, I think that's pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. So guys, thank you guys very much for being here. Guys, if you like your time here, please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more. Maybe you can see these two because I have a page down in the description or you can leave comments that we may talk about. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the city. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.